Hi guys, it's Jennifer. Um, I wanted to try something a little bit different and talk to you face to face as much as we can um, about my new book, Jar of Hearts. It comes out June 12 from Minotaur Books, my new publisher, and I could not be more excited about this book. I I feel like um, this is my best book, and I know that a lot of writers say that every time they have a new book coming out, and I think we all legitimately feel that way, and I'm pretty sure I said this the first few times too, but this book is really my best book, like for real, for real. Um, it's about, this. it's the story of Gio, um, Georgina, who is a successful 30-something executive at a Seattle pharmaceutical company who... Um, has a great life. She's engaged to the CEO. She's a self-made woman. Um, she's worked really hard. But she did this really awful, terrible, horrific thing when she was 16 years old um, that helped, um, that contributed to the disappearance of her best friend, Angela. And she kept the secret for 14 years until one day while giving a presentation in the boardroom, she is arrested for her role in that. And she um, cuts a deal. She testifies against her high school boyfriend, Calvin, who, as it turns out, is a serial killer. Um, and the truth begins to come out. And she goes to prison for five years. Um, and that's basically how the story begins. So there's no spoilers in that. That's how the story opens. Um, I think the reason this, this book is so special to me is because it tapped into something I haven't tried before, which is really kind of going back to my own time as a 16-year-old and what it felt like to be in school. And obviously this is fiction, so the characters aren't based on any one person or any person at all, really. But it was just an interesting thing to go back to the mindset of a 16-year-old and what happens when you fall in love or think you've fallen in love for the first time um, and the things that you might do to keep that relationship going, um, the choices that you make um, that have consequences and in this case in Gio's case the consequences are pretty terrible and uh, she tries to outrun them and, and doesn't obviously so um, the idea was inspired by an article I read a couple of years ago about Carla Hamulka and for those of you who grew up in Canada um, in the 90s you'll kind of remember you know, who she is she was married to Paul Bernardo who's a rapist and serial killer who's still in prison um, and she she helped her husband find his victims, uh, who were young teenage girls, who at the time were my age. Um, and he raped and murdered them, and one of them was her sister. And when they got caught, she cut a deal for 12 years and testified against him, and, and her testimony was pretty crucial in putting him away. But then she got out of prison 12 years later, and restarted her life, um, got married to the brother of her lawyer, they had children, and they're living somewhere outside of Montreal, I think, um, and she is a mom with a family, and I think what blows my mind, and I'm not alone, I don't think, in feeling this way, is just not only did she restart her life after having done this horrific thing, but she feels like she had the right to do that, which is uh, a little bit a little bit weird for me to think about that, um, because that story obviously was very close to home, and that story has always stayed with me. Paul and Carla have always stayed with me. Um, but it fascinated me to think of the choices she made, the consequences of those choices, and then kind of doing her time and, and paying the price, um, which a lot of people didn't think was enough. But then she got out it and then had the audacity, you know, to build a life for herself again, which is crazy. And how do you do that? How is that even possible? What degree of compartmentalization do you have to have to be able to do that? Um, you know, can people forgive you? Um, should people forgive you? Uh, can you forgive yourself? You know, and if you do forgive yourself, what does that say about you? Does that make you a horrible person because you forgive yourself? Or does it make you somehow an evolved person because you're able to forgive yourself and move on? And these are gigantic questions. And I really wanted to kind of 
explore that. And I did that with Gio to see, you know, can she rebuild her life? And of course, because it's me and because I write books that are, you know, about serial killers, there's a lot more to the story and, and you know, there's a lot of layers and stuff that happens that, you know, we don't find out about um, until later. And, um, you know, a lot of people ask too if the title Jar of Hearts has anything to do with the song Jar of Hearts. And uh, the answer is yes. I am aware that Christina Perry did a song called Jar of Hearts. Um, it's one of my favorite songs. And five years ago when I was going through a breakup, um, I got my heart shattered. I listened to Jar of Hearts a lot, like on repeat a lot. And I mean, like with all songs, you know, there's a lot of different interpretations. But for me, it really sort of encapsulated the grief that I was going through. Um, the feeling of trying to move forward and then getting pulled back in and then moving forward and getting pulled back in. Um, and, you know, the book has a lot of um, grief in it, and that's sort of one of the underlying themes of the story. So I think one of the reasons I love this book so much is because it's my most emotional book. Um, in fact, the, the book is divided into five sections, and each section is headed up by a stage of grief, and part one is denial. Um, and so really this is the book of my heart and, you know, I, I often wonder if, if every writer in their career gets one book, which is just the book, um, and nothing that they've written before can compare and nothing that they write after it will ever be quite like that. And if that's the case, then this is, this is that book for me. So to celebrate this release, um, and all of the amazing things that have been happening with it. Um, as you know, we sold the movie rights, and um, it's been getting a lot of, you know, good reviews, and I've been just really excited and, and terrified and stressed, but mainly excited. Um, I want to give some away. So I've got five arcs up for grabs, um, and to win one, you have to sign up for my newsletter. <laughs> but I promise, I promise no spam, no no annoying stuff. It's really just a newsletter that I would like to get started because I want to talk to you guys and I want to talk to you a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I want it to be a bit more personal. I want to tell you guys stuff that um, that I might not post about on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. And I want to keep you posted on book news and what I'm working on now and the stuff that inspires my writing and also answer writing questions that you may have, um, questions about my publishing journey all of that stuff, and so I, I plan to do maybe one or two a month, if that, and if you know me, um, that might not even be that many, but um, as we as we get closer to launch, I'd like to definitely talk to you guys more, and so if you sign up for my newsletter, um, I'll put a, a link um, somewhere at the bottom of this post um, of how to do that. You can enter to win one of five of these, and so please sign up. So, Jar of Hearts, June 12, Minotaur Books. Thanks, guys.